Hello everybody, thank you for joining us. Today we have got another after school club for you. Of course it's running virtually, so we're not actually in school, but here we are online. Thank you, thank you for joining us. We've had loads of sign-ups today, so I hope that everyone has a great time. We've got a very special visiting artist for you who's been doing some amazing things in the tech world. Um, I'm sure she's gonna tell you more about herself. And then we've got a session on drawing with Python. So Python is a coding language, and we're gonna give you an introductory session on how you can use it to draw shapes and designs. So buckle up and have a wonderful time. I'm just gonna go through some bits and bobs before we start, and then I will introduce our artist. Um, so just in case you don't know, um, we are the CCI, which stands for Creative Computing, Computing Institute. And we are an institute based in UAL, which is University of the Arts London. We support interdisciplinary teaching, research and knowledge exchange, all at the intersection of creativity and computational technologies. So we are really working um, between arts, arts, creativity and technology to bring courses, um, programmes um, such as this one. So thank you for joining and supporting. We hope that you can learn something new today. Um, so what is the After School Club and why do we run it? Um, so we are, of course, interested in working with students and mature students, um, but we are also very interested in working with young people. Um, so originally we had plans to um, run an After School Club that was gonna be physical. And then as you may know, we had a pandemic, so we've had to make it virtual. And we are now running these sessions weekly and we've been going through loads of cool things. We've had coding, 3D design, audio visualization, um, loads of things. And of course, this session is on drawing with Python. This is the last session in the series. It's gone really fast. We've run 11 sessions, I believe, over 15 weeks. And um, we are looking at making the after school club a physical thing again so please do spread the word we'll let you know more about that when it happens and um, but for now please enjoy the last session um that's online and and free for all and open for all um so hopefully you're watching through slido you'll see that at the left of your at the right of your screen and um, you can ask questions the artist is super friendly i promise she doesn't bite so if you get stuck at any point during the session, please do post your questions in Slido and we'll get them to Maria as soon as possible. We'll also be posting polls throughout asking if she's going too slow or too fast and just to make sure that you're enjoying yourself and asking for little bits of feedback throughout the event. Up at the top left corner, you'll see a menu that looks a little bit like a burger. It's got like three lines. Um, you can access the CCI website and email us directly from there as well. So if you are interested in the courses that we run, all the programmes that we run, please do check us out and get in touch with us. Um, and yeah, most of all, have fun. And without further ado, let's introduce Maria, the session lead for today. Hi everyone, my name is Maria and I will be your teacher today. Um, so I am going to share my screen and start with a very brief uh, presentation uh, that basically introduces who I am because you know, you don't know me. So, hi, I'm Maria, I am a BA Graphic Design Camberwell alumni uh, and I'm also like an overall designer, illustrator, things i do lots of different things but at the moment my uh, main thing is i am the design and outreach officer at child rights international network also known as crin and i am also a member of the digital maker collective which is actually where i met jasmine that you just saw uh, i'm also a co-founder of a studio uh, that is based on creative technology for social good called the ricebox studio and uh, my work overall tends to focus on social design or some form of interaction design. Um, okay, next, boom. So as a creative technologist, I've worked on different projects that basically merges uh, different forms of like interaction, uh, different types of tech, uh, different types of like um, programming and stuff that I integrate in my design work. 
So for example, on the right, no left, sorry, the big cloud was a project I worked on with uh, my studio, Ricebox Studio, where there's four of us and all four of us basically have worked together on a fellowship focus on period education. So that's an example of uh, work that I do that merges interaction and social design. Uh, so there's a bunch more that ranges from like video game to like building a 3D printer of a friend. But the main thing is I'm a collaborator and I wouldn't be able to be here today if it wasn't for all the collaborations that I've been doing for the past three years. Uh, so when it comes to Python specifically, uh, so I've used it like properly uh, this year in a project where, so for the past six months, I've been focusing on surveillance and facial recognition as like an overall theme in my work. Um, notably with Child Rights International Network, I've basically um, collaborated with like the Digital Mid Collective and them at Tate Exchange, where we did a lot of work exploring those themes, introducing audiences to different forms of machine learning and surveillance. And uh, in the middle, you can see that I used uh, Python uh, in order to build an emotion recognition tool that would then classify uh, a human as either happy or non-human. And it was part of an overall, of the overall project that explored um, surveillance as a way of restricting uh, people all as a way of advancing uh, art. So uh, recently I've written an article about it, uh, about surveillance and digital privacy during COVID, focused on children's rights specifically. You can find it on the CRIN website. But uh, that was the first time I've properly used Python into a natural body of work. Next. Uh, so the thing that I do a lot is I draw to understand concepts. So. I am going to say this now. I'm not an expert. I, I am a, a, a hobbyist, a designer, someone exploring uh, programming and creative technologies in, in a fun way, but you know, still, still structured enough to be able to use it. And I'm still learning. Uh, but so therefore, you know, be nice in the questions. <laughs> but as, as an overall kind of rule that I have is in order to fully understand what I do, it's really helpful to kind of make, uh, I make comics out of it to try and break down like complex concepts that I personally find really hard to understand without a visual. And I've noticed that by doing that, even though it takes longer for me to fully understand a concept, the moment I do that is the moment I, I can finally be able to explain it to anyone I want, which is why I'm here today. Uh, so uh, yeah, that is highly helpful. So for today, what we're actually going to do is we're going to learn basic shapes um, and other fun shapes <laughs> that we can do using uh, Python, specifically the, the turtle module. So you can see a link on the screen. If everybody could now please type the link and visit it, we're not going to be downloading anything. We're just going to be using a, a browser-based IDE. So I'm just going to give you a bit of uh, time to type it in. It's free. You can also sign up via Facebook to save your work on the website. That's up to you. But uh, yeah, so as a quick overview, we'll be learning how to draw basic shapes. I'll be also introducing the user input concept and finally the for loop statement. Uh, but yep, for now, I am going to let everyone just. Uh, so uh, Jasmine, would you be able to explain to us where the link is? You should be able to find it. Um, well, on the slide or. Oh, sorry, are you muted? Oh, don't yeah. worry, guys. Yeah. Apologies. Hello. Um, yeah. So you, if you if you don't want to type the link in by hand, you can access it on Slido. We've popped it in the menu for you that's at the top left of the screen. So if you just click that, there's a link to the um, to the website that you need to go to. Cool. Uh, so I'm just gonna yep start. Should I start now? I'm just gonna assume that most people are now on the. Uh, Ta da the website. Oh, sorry, no, let me reshare my screen. Apologies, so that you can see it properly. Uh, hang on. Okay, now everyone should be able to see. Okay, normally you shouldn't have a, a drawing on the side. That, that was just an example of what you can do. But I've deleted it now, so let's start from scratch. 
So I'm going to take it slow and also please don't hesitate to post any messages in the um, Slido if I'm going too fast or if I'm going too slow. But let's just start with a basic kind of general introduction of Python. So Python, I mean, why Python? So Python is a, a programming language that is quite close to English. It's known to be a relatively, okay, relatively easy language to learn, especially when starting off in programming. So um, I personally find Python to be a great way to introduce yourself to programming in general uh, because of how close it is to English. And because of its closeness to uh, like natural language, like English, it's the reason why we call it a, a high-end programming language, uh, because it's quite different from like your machine language, which is usually like binary code, one and zeros. So thank God that you know we have py like Python and programming languages that actually uses English, because otherwise it'd be so confusing. So how, I mean, what do people use Python for? You use it for lots of different stuff. Uh, so you use it a lot in machine learning, in uh, developing video games, uh, software development in developing chatbots, also in your mobile devices, uh, in your browser. Basically, it's a very versatile language and um, it's used a lot in the industry by uh, big tech companies. For example, Google, who uses it in their search engine and pretty much everywhere else. Uh, NASA also uses it to uh, program some of their equipment uh, and it's also used a lot in finance, stock market, and to solve equations, Dropbox uses it quite a lot. And the guy who invented Python now works at Dropbox, normally, maybe he left, anyways. So as you see, it's quite versatile, it's quite easy, and I highly encourage it as a starting language. So let's start with the, the start. We're gonna first start with importing turtle. So if everybody can write import turtle, and then break a line. So what happened here is, well, turtle is something that we call a module in Python. A module, I like to explain it like a suitcase. So basically, Python has a bunch of suitcases, a bunch of modules. And in, in each of these suitcases, you have different objects. And these objects are specific to those suitcases. So in a module, which is a suitcase, you inside, you basically, you basically have, sorry about that, like different functions and different syntaxes, vocabularies, actions that you can use thanks to that module. So import turtle is a super basic thing, function that basically, you're basically saying, hey, Python, please bring me the suitcase called turtle. And now that we have that suitcase called turtle, we're gonna start using stuff inside of that suitcase. So we're gonna start with uh, creating the canvas or the screen, however you wanna call it. So if you type WN equals turtle dot screen, capital S, make sure it's capital S because Python is cap sensitive. Basically meaning that if you write uh, like, you know, screen capital S or non capital S, it makes a massive difference and your code can just break if you don't have the right um, caps. You get what I'm trying to say. So right now, super simple line, that is basically saying, uh, hey, Python, bring me the suitcase. Okay, suitcase, bring me the screen. So now you're asking for specifically the screen. Now that we have a screen, well, the default color is white. So let's make it colorful. I'm gonna make it pink because for some reason, the pink in Python is lovely. But if you type wn.bgcolor, so B G C O L R, uh, parentheses, quotation mark, pink, you'll see that now your screen should be pink. Um, yep. So, okay, I'm going to assume that everyone's at that stage. Uh, so you can put any color you want inside. You can also put uh, a hex code if you want. Hex codes are basically, you know, hashtag, numbers and letters, and that, that hex code is used in order to basically um, figure out a specific color. So at the moment, I just wrote pink just because it's the easiest possible, but you can also put a hex code if you want to, um, or you can just write it out. Okay, now what we're gonna do is call a turtle. Now that we have a screen, we have a color, we want a turtle. So a turtle uh, in 
turtle <laughs> is literally um so they basically use a metaphor where the turtle is like the pen and the turtle that we just called is literally our pen so the metaphor that is used in python is that basically the turtle is drawing with its tail and yeah i kind of like that metaphor but here you can see it's a bit confusing because we're like turtle turtle why is there a turtle twice that's because what we did here is we were like hey python bring me the turtle suitcase now give me the turtle object from the turtle suitcase and the turtle object is basically the pen and that is the capital t turtle so all the stuff in purple is just is the objects that you've taken from the suitcase and that includes the background color t you can change it to anything you want. It's it's a variable. Variable, I, I hate that word variable because it sounds so complicated, but it's pretty easy. A variable is basically like a a, a nickname. Oh, sorry. A nickname was a kind of the way you name your, your objects and your stuff. So right now I've named my turtle T because it's simple. So now that you got your turtle, if you click on run again, Nothing's happened yet. Why? Because you haven't told your turtle to do anything yet. So now your turtle's kind of waiting and it's a bit like, well, what am I supposed to do? So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a basic square. So I'm going to introduce like, I'm going to like copy paste something. Like, I'm not going to copy paste, sorry. I'm going to write something. It's going to seem quite fast, but I'm going to break it down in a minute. So if you're going to type t dot forward 60 and then t dot left 90, then you press run. You'll see here that we've drawn, we drew, sorry, grammar. There is a line on the screen. So what happened here is I've introduced the two most, probably two, two of the most important, like, uh, I guess these are functions uh, or actions. Let's call them actions because, you know, they're actions. So t dot forward is an action that basically indicates the turtle to go forward. 60 is like 60 steps, I mean 60 units. It's like, think of it as like, yeah, 60 steps. So t dot forward in parentheses 60 basically means go forward 60 steps. So it went forward. And then t dot left 90 means um, go at, a, at an angle of 90 degrees on your left. Um, oh, sorry about that. So um, I seem to be going a bit too fast. So I am going to kind of wait for you guys to type it up and explain it as I go. So uh, what happened here is that you draw a line, but you also see on the screen that the arrow is pointing upwards. What this basically means is that your turtle has a, has a specific way of moving in terms of direction. It's very specific. So us, when we draw, what we do, we basically just like draw stuff out with our hand. It's free, freestyle, you know, we do whatever we want. We don't really start from like left or right. Python is different. Like the module of turtle, the turtle only goes in the specific direction uh, in as a default. What I mean by that is as a default, if you tell it to go forward, it is, naturally going to go east, which means right. I don't know how my camera is on the screen right now. I don't know if I'm pointing right, but just so you know, it's going right, east. Um, so if you run the code again, you'll see what I'm saying. The reason why I'm going on and on and on about the direction is because based on the direction, you will have to draw everything based on the logic of that direction. So 60 represents 60 pixel. Uh, so I have the same question. So no, it doesn't mean 60 pixel. Uh, so in the, I've been learning basically just through a book and it kept saying it's 60 units. I assume a unit must be, yeah, it must be like the unit of measurement that is used in that programming language, but it's it's not pixels. And for Jade, you see you have an error, a type error, okay. So that, what I assume happened here is, did you put a number inside of your bracket? So if you write t dot forward bracket, you need to put a number inside, any number at this point. But if you don't put a number, it will give you an error, er, sorry, error. Make sure that the syntax is proper. Make sure that you use, uh, you know, the proper quotation marks, the proper punctuation, uh, just write exactly how I wrote it and it should be working. Uh, okay, so Jade, I really hope you managed to saw it out. 
Um, if not, uh, just write on Slido and I'll help you out. So now that we've understood the direction of the turtle, we can kind of think about the logic. So before we actually start doing stuff on the screen, I'm going to ask you guys, if possible, if not, it's fine, just to get a piece of paper and a pen and to draw out a square. So I'm going to do it on my piece of paper here, and I'm going to draw out a square. Beautiful, beautiful square, which is not even that square. So when you draw out the square, you notice that you know, you're going into a certain direction. So what we're going to do is now we're going to draw the square, but based on the logic that your pen goes right pretty much all the time until you tell it not to. So if the square, sorry, if the turtle goes right all the time, that basically means that when, oh wait, so it says that my left and my right is flipped. Okay, guys, if you look at me on the camera and I say right and I'm pointing left, just, just ignore my hand, just think right on your end, yeah? East, right. So if you draw a square and you're starting and you basically want your, your turtle to, to go upwards, but it's going east, what do you do? You have to change the angle. So the square, when it first starts, is going into like, I'm just gonna draw it out. It's going in this direction, yeah? So this is the basic of the square. So how do you want it to go upwards? You have to write, turn left at a 90 degree angle so that it can actually go up. And then once, it has reached basically that angle. You have to write t dot forward 60 again, because now that it is angled at a 90 degree angle, you want it to actually write. So for it to actually, sorry, not write. Oh God, I'm so sorry, draw. So now that it's angled at a 90 degree angle, you want it to draw. So to draw, you just retype t dot forward and 60 again, and now you should see that it's gone up. I assume it has gone up on your end. I'm gonna let you guys try it out. But yeah, basically forward means draw. Left basically means like the angle. It basically means like look up or look left or look right. But it's forward is the action of drawing. Left, you're asking the turtle to basically look left at a 90 degree angle. Okay, cool. So, Next, we're going to complete the square. So, so far the square has done this. And now you asked it to turn its head 90 degrees. And then you, you asked it to go up again. And now that it's facing this way, you want it to face this way, don't you? So now you have to write again, T dot left 90 degree again. So just copy paste it this time. Don't write it out. And then you copy paste t dot forward 60 again. And now you should have the third side of your square. So based on this, you probably know what needs to go next. Copy paste it again, and your square should be completed. So I'm just going to check the Slido to make sure that you guys are all right with the tempo. It seems that for some of you, I'm going uh, too slow or too fast. I apologize. Um, not sure what to do considering it's the same percent, but <laughs> I am just going to run through again one last time <laughs> and then we can move on to the next, uh, next thing. So what have we got so far? We've asked Python to bring in the module turtle. The module, think of it as the suitcase. Now that we've got the suitcase called turtle, we asked it to bring the screen from inside the suitcase. And we asked it to make it pink. So now we have a pink screen, basically a pink background. And then afterwards, we asked it to bring us the turtle object from the turtle module. And that is the little arrow that you see on the screen. And then I introduced you guys to the uh, how to actually draw, the actual function to use to actually make it draw, which is forward, so t.forward. And then I explain to you the direction of the actual turtle. Like naturally, as a default, the turtle will be looking on its right. Always, always, always looking on its right. OK, great. Uh, now, um, I assume you guys got to the point where you got a square. And um, I'm just going to continue from there. 
And I, I apologize again for anyone who thinks it's too slow or too fast. I, I will, uh, you know, make sure that it's at a proper tempo, but I'm going to prioritize the people who think this is too fast just because, you know, in the end, in introductory, introductory workshop, you know, we gotta, we gotta be accessible and nice to everyone. So, oh, as a quick thing as well, for people who didn't understand just in case, why is it t.forward? Uh, that's just because your t is the name of the turtle. So you're basically saying turtle, go forward with a dot in the middle. And the dot is just the syntax because that's how Python works. Think of it as grammar. OK, so this is how you make a basic square. I'm going to show you how to make a comment. It's super simple, hashtag, and then write anything you want afterwards. But comments are super important because if you don't have comments, then you have no idea what you just did. And that is something I do a lot. It's very problematic when you're collaborating with people because then if you give your uh, really disorganized code to someone who looks at it and there's no comments, they're just going to be super confused. And it's obviously fun for no one. So don't be like everyone else. Put your comments down, guys. It's really important. So now. I'm going to introduce you to colors. So now that you've got a square, let's say that we want to make it so that the line of our square is colored. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to go back to uh, the T turtle turtle, break a line. And now we're going to write um, T dot color parentheses quotation marks, and let's make it green, because green is a lovely color. Let's press run. So now you should have a green square. So you can put any color you want. Again, uh, it is quite simple. Um, and yeah, not much to say there, but you made your square green. Now, what we're going to see next uh, is, oh, we're going to look at the stroke. So. This is quite thin at the moment, right? The stroke, like how thin the line is, it's quite thin. So let's say you want to make it bigger, I mean, thicker. So what we're going to do is we are going to tie. Oh, sorry, something's up. OK, no, done. Yep, sorry. I was having some issues with my browser. Uh, but yeah, we're just going to write it as size t dot pen size. Let's make it three. And uh, let's write it after t.color green. Run it. You can see now that it's thicker. So, this is how you make your stroke uh, well thicker. You just put uh, a value inside of t.pen size and it should change it. So, so far, you guys should now see some kind of logic that goes through um, the, the code. That you can see that the logic is that when you, you create a turtle and you give it a name of T, then when you want to change some of its features, like colors and size, and you want it to go in a certain direction, all you gotta do is type T dot something something. So T dot color, T dot pen size, T dot forward. But as you can tell, it's, it's quite simple, which is pretty chill. Okay, now that you've done uh, a green uh, thick square, we're going to fill it. So in order to fill it, you have to write, so again, t dot begin underscore fill parentheses, and you leave it empty. Uh, so if you're going to write t dot begin underscore fill and the parentheses, you have to put this before you have started your square. So the start of your square starts at t.forward60. Before you do that, put begin fill because you know that's where you want to begin your fill. That's where you want your square to start filling up in the color. And then you're going to finish it at the very end. Once you've finished your, your square, you go at the end and then you write end underscore fill. Click run again. And now, boom, you have a field green square. So, yeah, <laughs> so basically, um, what you've done so far is you made a square, you made it green, you changed the stroke, and uh, that's, that's awesome. That's the start, guys. We're, get, we're getting there, we're getting there. So now I'm going to demonstrate uh, how to lift a pen up, uh, because so far, you've managed to draw 
but I haven't shown you how to actually draw somewhere else without having to drag the pen. Because let's admit it, it's really ugly when you're making a drawing and then you can't, you know, put your hand up and you have to like drag your pen and make a massive stroke in the middle. So in order to drag the pen, but without having to actually draw, in order to lift the pen, super simple, all you gotta type is T dot up and parentheses. Again, put nothing in there, in the parentheses I mean. T dot up parentheses. So now your pen will be going up. The turtle is up, it's not on the paper anymore. It's basically hovering. So now I want it to go right, um, I want it to, sorry, face right at, at a 90 degree angle and go forward. I'm gonna put a random value, I'm gonna put 100, you know, just because I just want it to go somewhere. And then I'm gonna write T dot down parentheses. So T up basically means hover the pen, T right means uh, angle it at 90 degrees, and then T forward means draw, but because it's hovering, it's not drawing anything. Draw 100 steps, and then T dot down means that the pen is back on the paper. So it's basically like this. Hover, right, forward, down again. So now that it's down again, let's draw something else. I'm gonna show you how to do a triangle. So uh, I'm not actually sure how to pronounce this because I never learned the word in English, but uh, I'm, we're gonna do a equilateral triangle, basically a triangle that has the same, that has the same length for the three sides. So um, to do that triangle, we're gonna start with T dot forward, and let's put, again, random value, I'm gonna put 100. If we press run, let's see what happens so far. So the square's being made, it's being filled, and now it moved on the left-hand side, and it started making the base of my triangle. Um, great, so it made the base, and now we want it to angle again. So this is where your, oh, equilateral. Oh, equilateral, thank you guys. <laughs> equilateral triangle. So uh, in order to do the equilateral triangle, I hope I pronounced that right, uh, you need to remember how, uh, at what degree the angle of the triangle is. Um, so this is basic geometry that you should have learned in class. If not, it's okay, refresh a course. But you should angle it at 120 degrees um, in order for it to basically make, sorry, you need to angle it at 120 degrees like on all three sides in order for it to be equilateral. You can change the angle if you want to, obviously. It doesn't have to be specifically 120 degrees, but um, we're gonna go for 120 degrees for now. So let's write T dot forward 100, T dot left 120 degree, and then T dot forward again. Oops, sorry. Let's run, and now, we got a square as per usual. And now, boom. <laughs> so it's, okay, my triangle is going downwards. <laughs> uh, you can have it going upwards if you want, if you make it, if you make it face um, the right hand side instead of the left hand side. Um, but honestly, it doesn't make a difference. You're just making a triangle. So have your triangle face whatever direction you want. It's, uh, it's, it's up to you, you guys have fun. So cheers Tamara. So, now that you have, uh, well, two thirds of the triangle, let's just close it and then I'm gonna show you how uh, to, I mean, it's gonna be a surprise, I'll show you something afterwards. But let's just close it for now. So, right again, T right, 120 degrees, have it face again, um, 120 degrees, and then T dot forward, 100 again. If you play, what's happening now? So your square's being drawn again. Boom, you have a triangle. So now you have a triangle and you have a square. So that is two shapes down. Well done, everyone. So um, now that you have the basic shapes and that uh, I've gone through the basic, like how to draw with Python, uh, you have now realized probably that this is quite a lot of code for quite basic shapes. So you must be like, I assume, oh my God, if I want to do a really intricate shape, am I going to have to have like a hundred lines of code? No. So <laughs> I'm going to first introduce, um, before I start going into how to have 
a super amazing core shape without having to have 100 lines of code. I'm going to just introduce really quickly the user input, just because user input is, is, pretty, is pretty cool. So you know I explained earlier how you can use Python to make video games. So some of the really basic video games back in the day, you know, like adventure games and stuff, were actually built using Python. So you know the games where they ask you, would you like to go right or would you like to go left? And then you, as a user, you're like, oh, right. And then the game is like, you have now entered the new room. Would you like to go left or right again? So that is actually basic Python. You can do it using Python. And you can also do it within a Turtle. You can ask the user what color you want stuff to be. So in order to do that, we're going to, I'm going to show you how to do it. In order to do that, what you need to do is uh, you need to basically create like the input, the action for the input. So uh, let's say you want to ask the user what color the background it is. So I'm going to comment this out. Don't delete your code, guys. Comment stuff out. If you delete it, you can't find it again unless you copy paste it somewhere else. Don't be like me. I mean, no, be like me. Make comments. And now we're going to ask, um, the user what color the background is. So I'm going to write, you know, WN uh, color equals input parentheses. And I'm going to write the question, what color is your background? Sorry for that voice. I don't know why I did that voice. You can put double or single quotation marks. Just put double quotation marks just in case because I know that double quotation marks actually works. So WN color equals input parentheses, double quotation mark, what color is your background? So WN color, that's, that's, an, uh, that's a variable. You can write anything you want, but I wrote WN color just because it's like a really clear thing. Well, you know, uh, everybody knows what WN color means. It means background of the window. I'm not gonna start, actually, yeah, I can call it Jasmine if I want to. It will still do the exact same job. But as long as I give it a name and I stick with the name, it will work. So Jasmine equals input parentheses, quotation marks, what color is your background? Uh, so this basically means that they're gonna ask the user that question, but how is the user gonna be able to actually write it down? And how is, how is the input gonna actually change the background? So what you have to do in order for the input to actually change the background is you basically have to write, so WN dot background color. So we've written this in the past here. You, you see in your second line that you've, in your third line that you've commented out, WN dot BG color, yeah? Yeah, take that again, write it down again, and then write WN dot BG color parentheses Jasmine or whatever name you gave your input. It could be Jasmine, it could be BG color, it could be X, I don't care. Just write the name and stick by it. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna run the code and see what happens. Oh, sorry, okay, my window is, uh, okay. So I'm gonna raise this up, you should be able to see it, but on th there is technically three boxes on the website I gave you guys. And on the black box that's at the bottom, that's basically where uh, you'll find your question, what color is your background? So WN is basically window. It's, it's literally window. Um, uh, so what color is your background? I'm going to say blue. Yeah. Press send. And it made it blue. So that's a really fun way of asking for, actually, that's not a fun way. That's a way. That's the way. This is the way to ask the user for their direct input because I'm a sucker for interaction design and it's just really fun when you actually, as a user, get to write your own values to influence a piece of code. So I'm gonna do a second tryout on another area of the page just so that you can actually see how it works again. Let's say I wanna ask for the pen size again. So I'm gonna write size equals input parentheses what size is your pen? Then I'm gonna write t dot, oh, sorry, t dot <laughs> pen size, and then parentheses size. What you're basically saying is, you know, same thing again, pen size is the size of whatever the user said in the input. That's basically what it means. So let's run again. And it's going to ask me what color is my background. Let's say pink. 
and then it's going to ask me, what size is your pen? I'm going to say three. And it's a fat ass pen. How great is that? Like a Sharpie. Okay, now let's move on to the for loop. So the for loop is a bit complex, but it's going to change your life. So what I like, uh, to, how I like to explain the for loop is that basically uh, it, it's, it's an iteration um, in programming. Iteration means repetition. So I like to explain it as uh, basically if you're in a shop and you need to buy uh, lots of coffees for your friend, but you have 20 friends, well, it's really inconvenient to buy one coffee at a time and give it to your friend one at a time. So what you want to do is you want to buy 20 coffees in one go and then give it all to your friends in one go. Let's just pretend you have 20 arms. That's, that's basically what the for loop is for. It's so that you don't have to write hundreds and hundreds of lines of code for something that can actually be reduced at 50 lines of code. So I'm going to show you how to do a really funky mandala. So in order to do that, um, you can delete or you can comment your stuff out, but I'm just going to delete just to make things faster. Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm not going to delete just in case you guys get lost if I delete. I'm not going to delete anything. Sorry about that. I'm just going to start writing. So for A in range 40 column, please put that column. Please don't forget that column. Make sure that you double check that you haven't forget, forgotten any punctuation yet. So for A in range 40, what does that mean? That basically means so for something like a is again a variable it could be x it could be a it could be jasmine it could be anything like a is just basically the name you give to your you give your thing so for a in range 40 basically means like uh for that number uh, like for for that letter sorry a um 40 times in range 40 times basically mean that you're taking account a range of uh, 40 numbers so 40 times you want your repetition to be done 40 times i feel like i'm getting way too excited you basically type t dot forward 90 and then t dot left 90 again. Um, so that basically means that you want your turtle to be drawing forward 90, uh, uh, 90, oh my God, sorry about that. You want your turtle to draw 90 units and to then turn left at a 90 degree angle, you're basically asking it to do it 40 times. So if you press play, what's happening so far? Oh, sorry, it's asking for my color background again. Pink, size two. So it's making a square, it's turning green, it's making a triangle. And now it is making another square on the side and it's gonna be doing this 40 times. Um, the difference between the two boxes. Okay, so uh, the difference between the two boxes is that basically one is where you have your outcome. So this is where you basically see all the stuff happening. It's, it's basically like literally the output. And then the box underneath is uh, basically, uh, sorry, there's a word for that, but I, I call it my terminal. It's, it's not a, exactly a terminal. <laughs> this is basically where you will get your errors, your warnings, and any stuff that will be printed um, from Python. So for example, if you want to print a sentence that says, hello world, it will be shown there. Sorry, it will be shown there. I need a T. But yeah, think of it as basically like once your console, I guess, like this is where you get your errors, your warnings, all the fun stuff and the user inputs and stuff. Whereas the uh, pink box, it's not meant to be pink, but now it's pink. This is where all your outputs will be. Right, so um, back to the point, how to make the uh, to make a really cool mandala. So I am gonna delete stuff just because I realize it is getting a bit in the way. If I am deleting it, don't worry, I do have the code somewhere. I will send it to you guys if you need it at the end. But just for now, I'm gonna delete it just to make it simple. I'm gonna delete the input as well. I'm just gonna make it simple. I'm going to put the size back to three so that it doesn't have to constantly ask me what color is my background, what size is my pen. Now it knows the size and the color. Oops. Okay, now we're going to write, I'm going to write T dot color and I'm going to make it red because what's magical about this is if you, oops, 
if you basically write the color that you want inside of the for of the for loop, whatever happens inside of the for loop happens inside of the for, of the for loop. It's nested. So what it basically means is whatever you put inside there as an action, it will only happen in that context. So if my pen is green outside of the for loop, it'll be green. But if I want it to be red inside of my for loop, it will stay red, but only in that loop. So I'm gonna make it red because I like red. So after I've written t dot color red, I'm gonna write again forward t dot forward sixty again t dot right two. So turning at a two degree angle. I'm going a bit fast. Just write it down for now. Don't think about it. Just write it down because you'll see it has a fantastic outcome. Okay, now I'm gonna make the color orange again just because I want to t dot forward twenty t and I'm going to introduce a new thing called speed, t dot speed zero. What the speed is, is basically the speed of how fast your thing is going to be drawn. And because I want to draw something that's quite complicated, because it's, like, it's going to be repeated 40 times, I don't want to wait 40 seconds or whatever for it to be drawn out. I want it to be drawn out as fast as possible. So let's press run and see what happens. Woohoo! Look how fun that is. I don't like the stroke, I might change it back to one. But as you see, this is quite a complex shape and pretty nice. So this is basically um, a very, sorry, I changed it again because I like the stroke thinner and it's kind of more elegant. So this is a good example um, of how to use a for loop and why you should use a for loop. Because if it wasn't for the for loop, I would be writing this out 40 times. And that is fun for no, no one. And also, not only would I have to write it out 40 times, but if I want to have very specific colors only in that moment, then I would have to, you know, I would have to constantly change it. It's just easier to have it nested in that moment because what if I want to make another shape right afterwards and I want that shape to be green again and I don't want to have to retype, you know, to make it green again? I don't have to because if it's, if the colors that are changing are only changing in that context, then when I want to draw another shape again, like a square, it'll be back to green. So that's really cool. So uh, yeah, this is uh, an, an example of how to use the uh, iteration. There's quite a lot that you can do as well. For example, there is also this really cool shape that is way more intricate. Um, actually, it's not way more intricate. It's just different. But this is something you can do when instead of making a repetition in um, like only the numbers, you can also make a repetition in the colors, for example. Or if you basically want to have a shape that, that constantly changes colors like I do, but in a very specific way. So, for example, if you write for C in red, comma, green, comma, yellow, comma, blue. Uh, hmm, interesting. Wait. Oh, hey, how about that? I was like, this is there's an issue here. There's this is not normal. Why is this not the right color? The reason why is because I forgot a quotation mark. Yeah, this has been the bane of my existence for so long. So what you're gonna do here is you're gonna type t dot color and write c. So what you're basically saying is you're referring to the iteration that is written in the line before. So you're referring to the variable C in red, green, yellow, blue, in the sense that, wait, I'm just gonna continue writing it out and it'll make more sense in a second. So T dot shape means that you want your turtle to be a specific shape. It could be anything, it could be a circle, it could be a square, it could be a turtle. Let's make it a turtle just because just it's fun. Let's make it a turtle. T dot shape, turtle, T dot forward, 75, t dot left, 90, t dot speed, zero, just because, uh, actually let's make it one so that you can really see how it works. So write this down and then press run and then see what happens. So you'll have your super cool shape being drawn out. And once your super cool shape is done, you'll see that, hey, your little turtles appeared. And it's making a really slow <laughs> square. But as you've noticed here, what just happened is you've created the shape of your pen. So your pen now is not in the shape of an arrow anymore. It's actually in the shape of a turtle. 
And you've, what you've done is that you basically asked your program to basically repeat the forward left thing, you know, forward and left, the forward and left. You've asked it to repeat the forward and left function four times, but this time you've asked it to change the color every single time. Because instead of writing t.color pink or t.color blue, you basically said t.color red, green, yellow, and blue. I want you to repeat it four times, but make it a different color every single time. And you've noticed now that not only can you make lots of different lines in the for loop, but you can also make different colors in the for loop in addition to, to the line being drawn. And also I've changed the speed. I changed it to number one so that the thing will be drawn way slower. And one of the reasons why that's kind of useful, because I know some people will be like, nah, it's too slow, just make it fast, you just make it skip. The reason why it's good to see it happening slowly is because, I don't know for you, but I don't actually remember where my turtle's facing. So if it's going slow, like now, I can actually tell when it stopped, where it was actually facing, what angle it was facing. Because if you want to do a really intricate drawing of like a really intricate face, which you can, you're going to have to figure out what angle all your stuff is at and which direction it's supposed to go. And that can be a bit of a mind blower, like not in a good way, in a really horrible, complicated way. So, yeah, speed is, is really cool. Uh, so we're approaching the end of this workshop. Uh, as I can see, it's 1653. Uh, but so far, what I've introduced you so far, uh, for, sorry for the repetition, is uh, the general turtle module, uh, general features such as color, size, how to get a turtle in there, um, what the different words actually mean, and how to also get the user to give in their input. And in addition to that, uh, how to do a repetition using the for loop and the different uses of why. Use square brackets in line 19. Is there any benefit to using that there? Uh, yes. So. The reason why I use square brackets in this for loop specifically is because I am, how to say this, I'm be so basically red, green, yellow, and blue, the way I've written it out, so they're, they're words, right? I mean, I'm using letters. When you're using letters in Python, um, you're so it's not, it's not numbers anymore, so it becomes like, a, a, it's basically read differently by Python, like, whereas if you're writing numbers, it's also read differently. So letters are called a string. So a string is basically every time there's a letter, it's a string, and especially if the letter is in little quotation marks. So the words red, green, yellow, blue, they're basically strings. I, I'm kind of badly explaining that, I'm so sorry. I, I hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say with a string. But basically, when you're referring to letters and quotation marks and you're basically trying to actually talk to Python, but you know how the word for, C in like th those are those are those are functions right you're you're telling Python to do stuff whereas when you want to actually tell him stuff and you want to give him like a specific word like a name and you don't want him to read that as a function but you want him to read that as an actual word then that's a string and you have to write it in a very specific way and in this case I had to use square brackets because I also had multiple strings inside Whereas if it's like um, like a number, so you have two types of numbers, you have integers and you have floats, then uh, you don't put, I mean, you can put quotation marks, I guess, but in, in the case of 4A in range 40, for example, I wanted it to do, I wanted the code to do it 40 times, therefore I put the number without the quotation marks and in parentheses so that it can also uh, read it properly. So basically uh, if, you guys understood that properly. The, the reason why I use the square brackets is to basically give a list of uh, four different colors. And uh, those colors are written in a way that they are strings in the code. And that's basically what, what's happening here. I'm basically telling uh, my piece of code to instead of drawing, instead of drawing uh, four times, it's drawing four times using those specific colors if that makes sense. Am I making sense? Like I'm not that good at breaking things down like that on technical level, so I hope I did make sense. Yeah, okay. Um, any questions so far, guys? I'm sorry, I didn't ask if there were any questions as I was going. Uh, any questions? 
if if not, uh, Jasmine will be coming back. Um, ah, you're welcome, Adelaide. Um, if not, Jasmine will be coming back. But just just so you know, I, if possible, uh, I will ask Jasmine. I have like some existing code that I can send you guys that you can play with. I also have a list of documentation that is really good that I've been using to kind of learn these basics that I will send to you guys so that you guys can play with it as well. And uh, yeah, I hope this was relatively insightful and it was a relatively okay introduction to how to use basic Python. But it's, it's, I find it really good because you know, you're drawing and it's, oh, sorry, here you are. I was waffling, but yeah. Hey. No, you were amazing. I've been um, nodding along saying you've definitely, um, I mean, I've learned something new. I um, really clear, um, absolutely fantastic session. Thank you so much, Maria. Um, we have got everyone's emails on Eventbrite, so follow up with me and we can get some code sent out to people if we wish to do so. So do look out for that. I hope that you've enjoyed following along at home. Maria, I love the metaphors that you use. I think it's, uh, maybe it's because I'm dyslexic, but I, I find it so much easier to visualize a little turtle bringing me a suitcase full of things. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for a really um, accessible session. I hope that the attendees have enjoyed it as much as we have at the CCI. Um, so yeah, I think there might be a poll coming your way soon. Let us know if you enjoyed it. Let us know some um, constructive feedback if you wish to do so. Everything is appreciated. And a massive thank you to Maria. This is the last session in the series of summer sessions. Um, and I think it was an absolutely fantastic last session to close with. So a massive, massive thank you, Maria. And a massive thank you to all of the attendees that are here and all of the attendees that have joined any of the sessions that we've been put on. It's been a crazy time for everybody. And a massive thank you to the CCI team because we pulled this together within a couple of weeks. And it hasn't been perfect at times, but we can say that we have delivered a virtual after school club for 10 weeks, we've covered a lot of different stuff and it's been absolutely amazing. So we're gonna take a well needed break and, eval and time to evaluate what worked and what didn't work. We'll definitely be back with something else community driven. Um, but yeah, I just really wanted to pay my thanks to the CCI, to every single attendee and to every single guest artist that has come and delivered an amazing session. Um, so yeah, massive thank you. Enjoy your Tuesday. Thank you for joining us today. And yeah, we'll be back with more, but that's the end of the virtual after school club summer program. Um, so I hope you've learned something new and goodbye. <laughs>